Good morning. Hi, I'm Kristen Amdahl and welcome back to Create, Share, Inspire podcast. This is episode 285 and we're here in Southwest Florida waiting on the sun to rise over the buildings and the trees to the east. And this is the Gulf of Mexico behind me. Uh, what a fun sound the waves are today. I didn't say that right. Anyway, I love how loud the waves are today. It's really wonderful. It's chilly this morning. Good morning, Judy, Lisa, Karen, Jane, Edna. Thanks for joining live. Hi, Leanne. Our cold front is on its way here right now. Our high for the day was at uh, 7 o'clock this morning. Good morning, Kim, Lisa. Thanks, Karen. This is the Delta Flower hat done in Biso Bold Yarn, which is this, and it has this absolutely wonderful stitch pattern. Um, really comfy and cozy. It's a free pattern and video on my website and it's done in one ball of Be So Bold yarn which is my worsted weight organic cotton and bamboo blend. Hi Elisa, Margaret, Connie, Tanya, Melissa. Thanks for joining live everybody. Hi Brenda. Snow in Ohio this morning. Burr. Hi Lily. The colors are so pretty down here this morning. It's muted but there's some there's some purple in the gray and the clouds and it's just the whole palette is just so muted and beautiful. This is the beach to the south of us. There's a, several birds, one or two joggers, that's about it. This is where the sun will rise but it's behind clouds right now. And here's the beach to the north of us. A handful of people, not many, and a few birds. Yes, Holly, me too. I love the sound of the waves. And they're a little bit louder than normal today, which is an extra special treat. Thanks, Patricia. I love this hat. It's one of my favorites. I probably say that all the time, but it is. I love, I actually love making this stitch. I think it's a really fun stitch to make. So if you want to learn how to do it, you could look up Delta Flower Stitch videos here on my YouTube channel, or you can look up the pattern Delta flower hat on my website and you can also look up the yarn. Be so bold. Uh, good morning Naomi. Thanks for joining live. Hi Mar. Mar made this hat last year. Wonderful. You're welcome Lisa. I hope you have fun making it. I want to see pictures. Hi Barbara. Thanks for joining live. Good morning Sherry. Oh, Le uh, Leanne's having freezing issues. Oh, I have exciting news this morning, too. Good morning, Chantel. Thanks for joining live. Hi, Jackie. So, there is one piece from 80 Handmade Gifts that I have not shown you guys yet. And the reason being is because I lost it. And it wasn't until I started packing up my old house before moving to my new place that I found it. And so, ta-da! This is probably the easiest knit shawl you will ever make. I want to show it to you up close. Look at all those sequins. Even on this overcast day, you can see the sparkle of the sequins. Imagine if the sun was out. It would be even more spectacular. So, a couple of things that are awesome about this. First of all, drop stitches. Drop stitches, yes, yes, it's a beginner project, Joe. It is the easiest pro knit shawl you will ever make because of the drop stitches. The beauty of drop stitches is that you're dropping them on purpose and creating a larger project than what you knit. This is the equivalent of two stitches, and so you, all you do when you're making this is work in stockinette, which is knit on the right side and purl on the wrong side. You're working from the bottom up here, so you're increasing on either side and working up this way, but just in stockinette. And this magic happens in the bind off. In the bind off roll, you bind off a couple of stitches. <laughs> the wind's blowing my camera. It's really windy today. So you bind off a couple stitches, then you purposefully drop a couple stitches, then bind off a couple and drop a couple. I will be making a tutorial video about this, but honest, honestly, this is by far one of the easiest things you could make. And because those drop stitches give you 
so much more volume than what you actually knit, not volume, area than what you knit, um, it ends up being an incredibly quick project. And the one of the things that I love the most about drop stitches is that it really gives you the ability to show off unusually textured yarns because when you're making stitches, whether it's knit or crochet, you see a lot of the texture of the stitches more so than the texture of the yarn. It's when you drop stitches that you can see the texture of the yarn. So for this one, and the other thing that makes this easy, is that I held three different yarns together so that it was nice and thick so it would go quicker, right? So this is holding Be So Dazzling, be so sporty bling and be so tender yarns together. And if you look here, here's a strand of be so tender yarn in color Lagoon, and that's the thick and thin, loosely plied organic cotton that's worsted weight. Here's be so sporty bling, which is sport weight bamboo with a thread of pure silver plied into the yarn, and here is be so dazzling which is that silver thread yarn with these super shiny sequins attached to it so by holding those three yarns together it's it's called the Nina shawl and it's on page 72 of 80 handmade gifts book thank you Karen so here is what it looks like in the stockinette section and then which is pretty I'm not saying it's not pretty to see stitches in yarn but look at how you can really show off the textures of those yarns by looking at the drop stitch section. <laughs> there goes the wind again. <laughs> this would make a beautiful top too. I'm gonna lay it across. Oh, I fell in the garage yesterday. If I wasn't sore enough yesterday and still am from all the packing, moving and unpacking, I uh, fell in the garage yesterday and banged up my knee so bad. Ripped both of my big toenails. <laughs> bad. I'm lucky I didn't get hurt. Now imagine this as a top. If you made two of these and attached it at the shoulder and the side here. Actually, I would start a little wider at the bottom. But that would, or even just do two rectangles. But I think this would be an absolutely gorgeous, gorgeous top to wear for holiday or to wear for um, in the summer, whatever, wear in the evening. Look at this, it's not even sunny out here and look at how much you can see that sparkle. So pretty. So you can imagine how disappointed I was that something with so much sparkle and such an easy project that's great for beginners, you can imagine how disappointed I was that I haven't been able to find it all this time. I've shown you all, almost all the projects from the book, except the food, because you can't hang on to that forever. But as I make those things again, I will uh, bear. What yarn is it? Uh, it's three different yarns held together. It's Be So Tender yarn, Be So Dazzling yarn, and Be So Sporty Bling held together. And I just, it amazes me that the sequins sparkle that much without any sun. I mean, look at the sun is not out yet. My, my tripod has seen better days. This is so windy today. <laughs> yeah, and if you look inside the book, it'll tell you how many balls of each. I don't know that offhand, but it's not a lot because uh, Sherry loves my top and my vest. Thank you. I'm just wearing a, this is a top I found on eBay. You know, I like to buy stuff used on eBay sometimes an old lucky brand top but what i really loved about it is that this uh, lace panel here it's just a t-shirt material but i love that yoke and the vest i believe is also an ebay find <laughs> i think the jeans are too i'm wear everything that's store-bought that i'm wearing is not store-bought it's used and found on ebay <laughs> um thanks lisa Thank you. Thanks, Sherry. Yeah, both of these are Lucky Brand and my jeans are Chico's, I think. I love their, I love their jeans. But I usually buy them between $10 and $20 on eBay. I try not to spend more than $20 on anything uh, there, and sometimes under 10 
Anyway, it's just one of my side hobbies. We've got a curious bird here. You want to let's see? Hey, buddy. He says, nope, don't put that camera on me. Hi, buddy. <laughs> Does anybody have any questions about the hat or the shawl or any of the yarns? Birds, chili. Uh, exactly, that way you can afford more yarn. Exactly, Pamela. Um, some, how many skeins of yarn for something, but uh, what hat am I wearing, Vera wants to know. This is the Delta Flower hat. These beautiful, it's a beautiful stitch pattern of these Delta flowers and only two round, two rows to do it. It is a free pattern and video on my website. You can also look at uh, the video here on my YouTube channel. You would look it up by Delta flower and it uses one ball of Beso Bold yarn, which is my worsted weight organic cotton and bamboo blend. This is crocheted. The hat is crocheted and the shawl is knit. Hi, Helene from UK. Thanks for joining, oh, joining live. <laughs> Reading and talking. Thanks, Pamela. I'll take it off. Ugh. You can see the crown. The crown's really pretty too. So in the crown, you decrease by cinching all of those pretty flower petals together and it gives this beautiful starburst effect. Isn't that pretty? Then get that back on. Oh, bye Chris. Thanks for joining as long as you could. Oh. It does look like a flower. I love this stitch pattern. I think it would make a, it'd be a beautiful blanket, a beautiful baby blanket, but I'll probably do this stitch pattern for a baby blanket um, with Viso Baby yarn. It would be a beautiful shawl. It would be beautiful for a top. I, ha I made my mom a top in this stitch pattern many years ago. I made myself a shawl in this stitch pattern many years ago. And what else have I made in it? And the hats. And, and uh, cowls. Yeah, it was a really pretty sweater, Lisa. I did it in cotton yarn. It was like a real summery sweater. You know, something you'd wear a tank top under. Oh, it'd be gorgeous for a baby blanket, Joe. It'd be great for a, an afghan. It'd be great for a rug with the right yarn. Ooh, doing it in wool and felting it, it'd be great hot pads or great rug. Good place, it'd be pretty for placemats. It looks difficult, but it isn't. That's correct, Judy. It's a, I mean, it's a little tricky to learn it for the first time. I've made scarfs in this stitch pattern. It's one of my favorites. I love it. Yeah, felted rugs would be gorgeous. Felted mats would be beautiful. It'd be great edging on anything. If you just did two rounds up, two rows of it to make one row of flowers like that flower and just did that across, that'd be beautiful edging too be great for a, I've done it as a market bag yes Sherry I did it as a market bag before too yep uh, honestly I don't think there's a project that would be ugly in this stitch pattern it's gorgeous <laughs> that's funny god that's, that's a lot of things I've made in this stitch pattern and what's cool <gasps> I've made a dress in it too I had I made a red dress in this years ago and it got camped uh, I had a publisher cancel it from a book, which bummed me out so much, uh, and I wore it a whole bunch. At, it was a, uh, it's made out of alpaca and silk yarn, so it was more of a winter holiday dress in red. So what I did, well, so like, this is the double treble version of the stitch. So you, a double treble makes it this big. So if you made it in treble, it would be this big. And if you did it in double, it would be this big. And so, and if you did it in triple treble, it would be this big. So imagine if you used, the, if you manipulated the size of the stitch in the delta stitch, that sounds weird, to make shaping. So around the neck of the dress, I did a round yoke by doing double crochet, delta stitch around the neck, and then increase to 
treble, or maybe I started with half double. Anyway, so you started with the shorter stitch up here, so you had smaller deltas. And then as you made them bigger, you grew the yoke to become the full size that you needed. And then from there, work even in that larger stitch to create the body. And then I think to make the skirt yoke uh, flare out even more, I went larger again. So it was a really, so there was no shaping within the stitch pattern. Uh, Tina, there's, I have a whole bunch of different yards, a whole bunch of different yarns. You'll have to look and see what the yardage is on each one. I have many yarns and each one has a different uh, type of yardage and each one has a different weight. So it depends on what you're making, but 1200 yards, I don't, you need an, I need to know what thickness of yarn you're using to substitute for something and or um, which yarn you're asking about. I have yarns that are 650 yards per ball and I have yarns that are 140 yards per ball. So it depends on which yarn you're asking about. But be happy to help you if I can. A bunch of questions came in while I was talking. Uh, can't remember any of the other ones. If you want to ask again, go for it. Oh, and side conversations. Yeah, anybody that's interested in trying the Delta Stitch should give it a try. I've got several videos on it, on how to work it in the round and how to do it in rows. So uh, either way is not hard. It is cumbersome though. You're putting together three of these petals on your hook at one time. So, you know, give yourself a break when you're trying it. Tina, if you have even more specific questions about the yarn, send me an email. I'd be happy to help you figure out what you're trying to make. I'd love to help. Breeze Bee has great yarn for the hat. Cool, wonderful. Yes, Joe, the videos are on my YouTube channel and they're on my website. Uh, the shawl, could there be a crochet version? Sure, all you would, I would do, I would do that shawl like the, um, I don't remember what I called it, but do you remember when I went to a wedding recently and I made a gold shawl with tassels um, out of Be So Dazzling yarn and Be So Fine yarn? I think that pattern would be a very similar complement to this because what it was is single crochets here and long chains there. Um, maybe tomorrow, if I can remember, I'll bring both of these to show you side by side but they are both a very similar look. I just can't remember the name of it to help you search for it on my website. Um, I think it has a really simple name like that, like tassel shawl, but the gold one. Remember the gold one? So that, if, I, if you looked at them side by side, you would see that they are very similar uh, textures. It's called the tassel shawl. Okay, uh, yeah, hairpin lace would do that too. We need to do some hairpin lace tutorials. I, um, <laughs> the wind's going nuts today. Yeah, the gold tassel shawl would be a very similar uh, texture. So what you would want to do, I don't know what's going on here. Anyway, so what you would want to do is instead of, so instead of working it in straight rows, you would increase with that one like you've increased with this one. So definitely doable in crochet, but it's really easy in knitting. So learning how to make it in knitting would be great too. Yeah, lift it up maybe. I think this uh, tripod's coming to the end of its life. Yeah, the waves are so cool today. I agree. No, maybe it's just the, uh... here, let's see if I can tighten this. There there just need a tightening all right just a little technical difficulty we'll get through it yeah so if you were going to do a crochet version of this you would start and you wanted to do it in a triangle shape like this you would either increase from the bottom up or you could decrease from the top down but the actual stitch pattern in the center is very similar to that tassel shawl hi birdies Hi guys! Definitely more birds than people today. It's the weather. 
It's about 60 degrees out here, damp, windy, absolutely not a beach day for uh, South Florida. <laughs> and it's this is the high it's, it's going to get today. It's going down to 46 tonight, and then it's going to be chilly for several days. So it should be fun. See if I can pull out some warm knitwear to wear to the beach tomorrow. <laughs> Does anybody have any other questions about either of these projects? Oh, Pamela loves the cowl she bought from me. Wonderful. Yeah, this, I still have a few samples for sale. So if you still want to buy some handmade samples by me for some holiday presents or for yourself, uh, I think there is definitely um, an appreciation for being somebody that makes handmade to buy something handmade because you know what goes into making it. So if you want to buy yourself a treat or buy a handmade gift for someone else this holiday season, you still have... Ah! Well, I just swallowed a bug. <laughs> I thought he went too far into my mouth and my throat to be able to pull it back out. I actually had to swallow it. Yuck! <laughs> I don't even remember what I was saying now. <laughs> oh man, yep, I had my protein for breakfast. <laughs> and there was nothing I could do about it. That was bizarre. <laughs> yep, extra, extra gluten free protein for me. That's funny. Yep. <laughs> Weird. Weird. Oh, if anybody. Uh, wants to see i posted a photo of the early morning sunrise you know when the sky starts lighting up before the sun comes up uh when i was leaving this morning the sky was so bright orangey pink and i took a photo of it and i posted it to my instagram story so if you want to see it that photo has no filter on it and it's so what a great contrast because the colors are so muted down here this morning that it's wild that I saw this bright pinky orange sunrise on the clouds, and which was beautiful. And then to see this beautiful muted palette, like within an hour of each other. Edna received her book today. Edna lives in India. Wonderful. Enjoy it, Edna. Can't wait to see what you make. Judy saw it. Yeah, it was so beautiful. The cloud structure was beautiful, and the way the light was hitting it was beautiful. Yeah, it was bizarre and gorgeous. Yeah, exciting that Edna received her book today. It takes her it takes a little longer for her packages to arrive because they go to India, but yay! I know we have several people here who uh, shop with me from Australia and lots of people that shop with me from uh, Europe. I have shipped to South America before, but not often. I have shipped to Mexico. Uh, I have shipped to the Middle East. Um, yes, Tina, that was, that gold, the gold shawl is the one we were talking about this morning that uh, mimics this stitch pattern, but in crochet. If I remember, I will bring it to the beach tomorrow morning and we can show both of them side, side by side. Oh, I've been thinking about how to do, I think I'm going to try to do uh, my macrame tutorials here on the beach. I was thinking that if I brought um, a garment rack down here and hung, the, and hung the, the dowel rod from it, I could actually do the macrame here on the beach, which would be great because instead of seeing white rope on a white wall, you would see the contrast of the white rope against the waves. And I think it might make the tutorials a really pop on the screen a lot better. What do you guys think about that? Oh, Kimmy got snow this morning. That's exciting. Yeah, I think it's going to be fun. So I'm trying to figure out all the stuff and what to make first. I want to make some plant hangers for my new house and or new home. And I want to make um, a big wall hanging. but probably start small so we'll start with a plant hanger 
Pamela, is it snowing? It's snowing like crazy in Cincinnati, Ohio. Well, stay cozy and warm. Stay inside if you can. And be careful if you have to drive. There's our pretty friend with the spotted feathers. Oh, Edna received uh, her yarn and beads and stuff today. Wonderful. That's even better. You've got lots to play with now, too. I don't blame you, Pamela. It's dangerous to drive in the snow and the ice. Yes, Leanne, that's exactly what I would like to do. Uh, do um, decorate um, a wall hanging with some beads. And I, can't, I haven't found any driftwood down here, though. So I don't know what I'm going to do for driftwood. I even looked on Amazon and eBay to see if they sold driftwood, and they don't. So I guess I'll have to search the beach a little more. Maybe go to one of the state park beaches where there's a little more nature around. This is pretty uh, populated here with hotels and condos. So go back to like Barefoot Beach where I remember where I did the photo shoot for Motif Magic. I think if I go back there or maybe go down to Clam Pass, one of those, there's a lot of nature at the beach or Wiggins Pass too and look for some driftwood because that would be really cool to do a macrame wall hanging on driftwood. Yep, anybody that has to drive in the snow and ice, please be careful today. Thanks, Lisa. Oh, yeah, Margaret. Yeah, last night I made gluten-free Cuban sandwiches. So, the first, so two nights ago, I took a pork shoulder, or two days ago, I took a, took a pork shoulder and put it in my crock pot with a little barbecue sauce, a whole head of garlic, a half an onion, and about a cup of orange juice. And I let that simmer all day until it became, you know, pull apart tender. And then uh, instead of eating it that day, put it right in the fridge. Because, uh, I forget why we didn't eat it for dinner that, <coughs> that night. But anyways, I wanted to make panini, uh, Cuban sandwiches with it. So the following day, I, <coughs> Excuse me. I bought some gluten-free bread and I will be making gluten-free bread soon, but not until I get settled in the new place. As soon as I get settled in the new place, I'm going to start sharing some recipes for gluten-free baked goods. Can't wait to get started on it because I know a lot of people are looking for ways to do it at home. Uh, so anyway, I bought a loaf and uh, it was okay. but. I so did bread, mayo, light mayo, light mustard, cheese, prosciutto, and that pulled pork. And then sandwiched all that together and put it in a panini press. And oh my God, our sandwiches were amazing last night. So, so good. Marlon didn't want pickles on his, but I think it'd be even better with pickles too. Yeah, I see lots of people are interested in gluten-free recipes. Yeah, I know. I get emails about it all the time, too. Uh, as soon as I started eating gluten-free, I got lots of uh, interest in sharing more recipes with that. So as soon as I get settled, um, I will definitely start doing that. Yeah, pickles for me, too, Joe. I don't need an excuse to eat pickles. I can eat them right out of the jar. <laughs> I even like pickle juice. It was good, Sherry. They turned out so good. Yes, it's a Cuban sandwich, yes. But I did it in a panini press. But yes, it was a Cuban sandwich, absolutely. It was a Cuban sandwich minus the pickles. <laughs> and uh, it didn't have any pickles either, which is crazy. But anyway. I love all pickles, especially the ones I make. So I would like to do, you know, I shared a couple of my refrigerator pickle recipes and 80 handmade gifts. I would actually like to do a separate book on pickles because pickling vegetables and fruits is amazing. Pamela should be 100% gluten free, but is about 80. You know, uh, I'm afraid of getting headaches again. That's the reason why I don't cheat on gluten uh, at all is because 
I used to get headaches at least, oh, at least once a week. No, at least every 10 days to two weeks and more likely every week. But my pickle, my pickles, but my headaches lasted more than a day. And as soon as I stopped eating gluten, my headaches went away immediately. And I think that's just crazy. Lily blends beans when she puts in her Cuban sandwich. That sounds good. I love beans too. Oh, Lisa's got four by four. That will be good for driving in the snow and the ice for sure. Has any, uh, Kimberly loves pickles too. Yeah, I love homemade pickles. I love pickled anything. So pickled, pickled veggies, pickled fruits, they're all wonderful. Oh, at least half Cuban, and that's how her, her father made his Cuban sandwiches. Thank you for sharing that. That's awesome. Melissa stopped getting headaches when she stopped eating artificial sweeteners. That's interesting. I don't do any artificial sweeteners either. That's always scared me. Like no diet sodas, no diet or low sugar um, things. The other thing, you know, getting back to the pickle book, what I'd really like to do is a book on pickles and jams and things like that, things that you put in mason jars. Uh, I think it'd be fun to do a book on all things that you put in jars. I don't drink anything diet either, Lisa, although I found out that I can't drink Coke anymore because it, it's not gluten-free. So that was a shocker to not drink Coke anymore. Uh, that was one of my guilty pleasure treats. So I haven't had a Coke in three months now, but I suppose that's all right too. <laughs> You're not supposed to do that either. All right, well, we are out of time. So let's take this last minute here to look out at our gorgeous view. Listen to these waves and set our intentions for the day. much everybody for taking time out of your busy day to spend a few minutes here with me. I hope you enjoyed the sunrise, the sound of these amazing waves, the beautiful scenery, the birds chatting with me and everyone else here. Don't forget all the links to everything we talk about are in the video description below and if you have any questions please always feel welcome to leave them for me in the recorded uh, version comments because I answer all of those questions every day too. Let us make time to create, share, and inspire today and every day. I'll see you all tomorrow. Bye.